So John, what is actually PowerShell? So PowerShell is a scripting language and modern command line shell for Windows system administration. You could use it to manage the registry, perform WMI commands, search for files, you could query domain users and groups, and really so much more. Oh, excellent. So is it something that is only Windows specific, or can you run this in other operating systems? That's a great question. Actually, in 2016, Microsoft released PowerShell Core, an open source and cross-platform version that runs on top of .NET Core. So now individuals can run PowerShell commands on Linux and Mac in addition to Windows, whereas before it was just Windows. Oh, well, OK. So we do have an entire section coming up dedicated to PowerShell security. Why would we? dedicate an entire section to PowerShell. Absolutely. So one, PowerShell is actually getting a lot of attention from a lot of security uh, folks out there. And the reason uh, for that is because, uh, you know, PowerShell allows you to actually do a lot of things in the system that traditionally you actually have done with other tools and other mechanisms. And there's even a joke between um, security professionals saying that I don't need an exploit anymore, I just have PowerShell. Yeah. And the reason for that is because you can actually invoke a lot of these actually commands and do a lot of things in the Windows environment that now, as you mentioned, in other environments as well, without triggering a lot of alarms that actually uh, are, um, you know, can be set up by actually endpoint protections, like things like antivirus, uh, host-based firewalls, and host-based intrusion prevention systems, right? So since it also becomes kind of de facto in Windows installations. It's a Swiss Army knife for a lot of security professionals nowadays, and that's the reason that we want to actually dedicate a, a section for it. Okay. PowerShell sounds like it can do a lot, but it sounds like it might be complicated. Do you need to be an expert in order to, to use it? And not at all, and I think actually, so um, you do have to have some familiarity, of course, with PowerShell. You have to know a little bit of actually the command line in Windows, um, how to actually execute some of those commands and everything. You do not have to have a PAG in PowerShell. So what I urge you is if you're just getting started, of course, to play with it. As a matter of fact, actually, that's one of the things that you're going to do now, right? So you're going to do yeah. a demo on how to uh, use PowerShell from a you know, high-level perspective, and then in other lessons, you're actually going to deep dive into the attack tools, right? Yep, exactly. So we'll start off with regular PowerShell in Windows, and then we'll start using PowerShell for, for ethical hacking purposes. Thanks. Okay, let's have a look at how PowerShell works on a Windows machine. So right from any Windows command line, you can type in PowerShell, and it goes into the PowerShell command prompt. You can see that it's changed to PowerShell because on the left side, it now has a capital PS next to it. So now we can type in various commands. If you want to get help at any time, you can type in get-help and it tells you exactly how the help page works. So you type get-help and then a process name, and it'll tell you how to get help on that process. Now if you type in get-help space x asterisk, then it pops up all the different processes that you can get help on. So we could just pick a random one from the list, let's pick registry, and we can type get-help space registry, and it pops up a list of examples and ways you can use PowerShell to interact with the Windows registry. So we want to pull some groups from the system. We can type in get-wmi object win32 underscore group, and you can actually find out the different groups that are on the particular system. So you can see there's an administrator's group, which would be the obvious target for any attacker. There's also the user's group, guest group. If we want to invoke certain commands, we can even run certain legacy commands as well. So the net local group administrators command that you run in a non-PowerShell environment it works here as long as you put it through the invoke dash command in parentheses, you can actually put in that command and it'll run inside a PowerShell command. You may ask why would you run a simple command within the more complicated PowerShell command and really because 
you can do additional functionality with that. So in a PowerShell command, you could also run that particular command on other machines on your network as well. But at least working on the local machine, for demo purposes, you can see that it popped up a couple administrators. There was an administrator, sec training, and a Zorro user on the system. Let's look at other commands that we can run. There is a take screenshot command, which is not something that's built into PowerShell, but it is something that we can take advantage of other people's scripts. If you go to Microsoft's website, they have a list of PowerShell scripts that you can run. We're going to download their take screenshot command. You can see they have the .ps1 extension. We're just looking at, we downloaded the file onto our desktop, and we can see that is take-screenshot.ps1. And now we want to run this on our system. This is the full command we're going to run, basically saying PowerShell execution policy remote sign, which basically says that we're going to allow execution for this particular command. Some commands will not let you execute without additional permissions. We were basically saying allow this command to run. And then the command is the take screenshot.ps1, which is running that script that we just downloaded. And some of the command line switches within that task is screen, which basically says we're taking a picture of the entire screen, and then the dash file, which is asking which file to put the screenshot into. So we're dumping this into a test.bmp file. So if we run that, you can see that it took a screenshot of our desktop and put it into this file.